Okay, thank you, Je Joe, for that. We're hoping that Sean is joining us. Yes, brilliant. So our, our other partner in this project is uh, Sean Utter from uh, Trinity College Dublin. He couldn't be with us today, but he's online. We'll let you introduce yourself in a, in a second, Sean, um, if that's all right. But the reason I'm here is that this project is one that I've been managing for the last three years now and working alongside Claudia, uh, Sean, and a number of other partners. This, this project was funded by the Erasmus program when we were still allowed to um, um, com uh, compete or, or, or bid for that sort of money. And we've had a, a really um, interesting and useful um, journey working with six other universities across, um, across Europe, Amsterdam, Alto, Trinity College, um, Central St. Martins um, and also um, and, uh, Dresden, technical, the Technical University in Dresden, and then ourselves. So BCU has been leading the project. So um, I'm going to hand over um, to Sean just to say hello, and then I'll pass back over to Claudia, who I think is going to start the presentation. So it's three ways, this one. <laughs> Thank you. And hello all, I hope you, hope you can hear me okay, and hello from Dublin, um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Sorry I could be there in person, um, but hopefully we can have a good, a good conversation uh, through, through uh, the, the means of Zoom. Just to say, actually without a good project manager and somebody connecting people, a lot of things wouldn't have happened. So Laura is always very modest, but actually as our project manager, she was actually the one who wrote me into a previous project. If I hadn't gone into that previous project, I would have missed out on a lot of fun and a lot of networking and actually making connections that I found very nourishing and they actually changed me over time and for the better. Um, so it's definitely a teamwork. So only four of us here right now presenting, but there's a lot more behind it. We just ask uh, Sean to do the next slide. So so these are some of the team members. I forgot he, he's got the, the driving seat. So they are some of the team members. Again, this is not complete at all. And I think the whole point about um, the Erasmus Plus funded steaming project, which is about steam innovation in curriculum, was that it, it would have never happened with just a, a small group. It needed that variety. It needed those different different people, different ideas in different contexts, including a science gallery, in, including Ars Electronica. And some of us weren't familiar with these different groups before, so we also had to find ourselves. And having just started just before COVID, it was also an interesting experience. So we learned a lot from the first meeting being in person in Amsterdam, but actually pretty much everything afterwards almost completely happened online. So thanks to Miro for uh, being an in incredibly good platform of bringing things together. Um, I don't think we missed out on things, but um, it, it, it was a different way of working. So, Sean, if you could go for the next slide. So, what were the objectives? I think it's, it's, it's obviously, it was written. It was un written under specific call, and as you realized, BCU promotes innovation quite strongly, and a lot of calls from governments, I think, around the world, but especially also in the UK, they really emphasize innovation. I think some of us are a little bit more critical, and I, I really liked all the bits heard so far in the morning and early afternoon about that reality check. I think sometimes our political rhetoric is a particular one, but it doesn't necessarily reflect what is really good for the planet. Um, so, in similarly, our group actually had quite different perspectives, but I think that was a very good, rich platform to learn from and build on. So, the, the idea was to, to learn from the different higher education institutions who were active on STEAM, be that as STEAM being explicitly mentioned, or be it because STEAM was happening even though they didn't use that acronym. And then we, we focused on approaches, trying to draw out you know, what approaches existed across the higher education system. But we also wanted to find a platform. What did we find was really important and made STEAM STEAM? Because in the end, yes, transdisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity are important, but why do we use actually the term STEAM rather than inter or transdisciplinarity? And then we tried to work on methodologies and methods 
as sort of move from the more general approaches to more specific methods? And how, how can we make STEAM methods? What sort of things have to happen? Um, we'll give you a few examples, but for example, um, reflecting, taking things apart, questioning it, and then piecing different things together. So it's not necessarily always total innovation, but it's sometimes even just tweaking it and actually reflecting on it, stepping back and looking at it from different angles, looking what other people are doing, really learning and experimenting and piecing it together differently, quite often also led to new methods, and we come to that in a bit. And then the evaluation framework, which Sean is leading, and he will tell us a lot more. So Sean, the next slide. So when I say definition, don't curl up, you know, it's not, it's not written in stone. So we said we just wanted something to put forward. It's not the absolute list. But what we also found, it was more like working principles. It's something to open up and be a, a reference point that is important rather than something that constrains. So if you feel constrained by it, no, it's not meant like that. It's meant to actually make you make it richer, open it up, and, and make it really uh, exciting. So it's about different cultures and putting arts and sciences on an equal footing. And when we say STEAM, we always mean also humanities, actually. We decided that from the very start early on. So everything that isn't mentioned in there, I'm sorry, but for us it, it was also part of it, even though it wasn't in the acronym. It is quite often process-driven, and we talk a lot about process. And I think processes are important, because if the processes aren't working, well, maybe we are, you know, it helps. If, it doesn't have to be formulaic, but processes are important, but processes are not the only focus. So it also had a lot to do about, you know, who's allowed to drive it and contribute, and also how, how big, how holistic it is, and to strive for that. It also meant experimenting and being allowed to fail, so that failing is actually not something negative. Some things may not work out, but those in the design process, design thinking process, they fail fast, it's good, actually, do that. And then also not necessarily always having to have a very specific end goal. And that's the whole point, isn't it? Where does our journey take us? Sometimes we don't know, and it's actually quite nice. And it can be a very nice goal or, or journey, but it isn't really set in stone from the start. So it's not like defining something and we'll just want to get there. This requires collaboration, diverse um, diverse groups, diverse methods, diverse um, aspects, but also safe spaces. And therefore, sometimes space was also identified as actually quite an important aspect. So therefore, uh, the way we work, studios, um, creative spaces, maker spaces, I mean, that's one of the roots of, of STEAM. And not to forget that, that that also can either um, bring things out or actually um, be a hindrance. We want to promote learning was key, so it was for everybody, whichever seniority or level, it doesn't matter. Learning is a continuous aspect, and to have a multimodality. And in fact, we said, if you don't feel out of your comfort zone, then maybe STEAM isn't actually working right now. So quite often, you would also really be taken out of your comfort zone. It is very much about prototyping and making, so it's not just about talking and being discursive and chatting, nothing happening ever, or changing. It is very much also about doing, which is also different, but also through that making and collaboration in making, you also find that you actually learn a lot and it's something different, but also you might take it outside, not just be stuck in university, but also either take it outside. And I think the issue with transdisciplinarity is also an interesting one. We come back to that a bit later because at university, quite often, we are much more in the multi and interdisciplinary, not necessarily always in the transdisciplinary. Um, critical thinking, creativity, and communication, I think they were emphasized very highly all the way through, and obviously that was a core part as well. So that's how we came up. We brainstormed it, had a particular <clears throat> way of coming about it, and we called it a working definition, all feeling a bit uncomfortable about the term definition, but actually, over time, we found the principles and those keywords a useful reminder. And ideally, you would embrace a lot of them, not just cherry pick one or two. So, next slide, please. 
So then we also tried to make sense of all the approaches that we found we were using across the different institutions. And we, well, you could say we could have probably ended up in different ways, but that's the way we ended up with. We found they related quite often to behavior, to cultures, to engagement and space. You want to talk a bit about that? Uh, yep. Uh, so basically we were just mapping all of the approaches that we were already implementing in our institutions and, and this is kind of one of the things that came across um, and as uh, Claudia said, it was very much also trying to work out what we meant by STEAM even though we started this project uh, with STEAM in the title um, and we knew we were doing something like this and so these were the kind of the areas that we looked at um, that, that kind of the main sort of uh, cr uh, sort of uh, cross areas that kind of uh, each different program and approach that was done in the institutions would sort of like work with maybe not all of them um, but often uh, at least two and, and three um, uh, to work with like for instance uh, steam house itself was an approach uh, that we kind of described in, in the context of space um, but that also is like about building cultures and also about engaging um, outside of those sort of cultures already working within the space uh, so, next slide, Sean. Um, and so, these are, are some of the approaches, and they can be found online on our website, steam, steaminnovation.org. I'm going to mention it a few times, because we've been creating all of these resources, and we really want them to uh, be shared. And these are basically uh, case studies of, of what we were doing at the different institutions. So, for instance, we've got... Um, uh, interdisciplinary collaborations through design challenges from TU Dresden, uh, which was uh, the faculty of uh, uh, industrial design, and that was very much about sort of bringing in uh, design to sort of uh, engineering aspects that, uh, sort of design thinking, sorry, uh, to engineering that wasn't sort of often implemented within that. Um, and also uh, biology lab and art schools from Alto University, so that was the uh, um, the, uh, the lab, the bio lab that they have um, at Alto University, um, and also their, uh, what's the other one from Alto? Um, uh, arts is a route for knowledge building. But I mean, this has been discussed already a bit today. This was an elective, a compulsory elective, so not really an elective, but a cross faculty sort of course of arts um, that was uh, required for all sciences and engineering to done. And so this was like one model as well. Uh, so I, I would really recommend to check out the, this online. Uh, we've got it in the handbook, and you have more detail on each of these. Uh, so next slide, Sean. Um, yeah, so th this is, again, sort of just an overview of them. Um, and I'll just go to the next slide also. Um, and so this is uh, an aspect of uh, in, in defining STEAM approaches as well, and also looking at our own approaches, uh, Claudia led a sort of research paper looking at all of the different qualities that sort of come up in all of the literature when we're talking about STEAM. Um, maybe you want to describe this yes. a bit, Claudia? Yeah, so to come back, so it was, because we work from our experiences, and obviously we are sort of academic related institutions, but we actually hadn't done the base of looking at all the literature available at the time and what was actually out there. First of all, there was, I think as Chantal already emphasized, there was actually very little out for higher education. It's largely uh, secondary and primary education or even preschool education. And that is still the case, which is quite interesting, isn't it? There's so many interesting things happening, but in terms of the academic literature, very, very little defining. <coughs> and so I'd, we just wanted to see what had other papers said that related to education and what they crystallized. And it was also a good way for us to cross-check and contextualize our own definition, where we sort of aligning with others or and, and why or why not. And we found a lot you find is actually embedded. So there's obviously a, a good overlap. And that's what practitioners, therefore, people working, living, breathing, steam, that's what it's all part for. So it is, it is really quite a holistic approach and, and quite a, a rich approach. We go for the next slide. Yeah, so I, I might just follow up here to rewind a bit, uh, uh, quite a bit, and, and go back to why STEAM at all to begin with. Um, and I think this is something, and we're, when we're looking at those different qualities, uh, and, and we've been discussing STEAM all over the place today at a STEAM conference at a STEAM house, um, and I kind of want to ask, why do we 
why do we even sort of use this term? Where is, where is STEAM from? And STEM, we kind of know. STEM was clear. STEM came out in the late 90s. Uh, it was an educational policy. It was like led by government in a sense. Uh, and this was just basically to call for sort of like future proof proofing, like growth, uh, the jobs of the future, having a competitive industry that we needed science, technology, engineering, and maths. Not necessarily transdisciplinary approach, like not as a whole approach that we kind of think about when we talk about STEAM, but that's what STEM was. So this was the late 90s. Um, and at the time, artists and arts and humanities were like, hang on, hang on a minute, standing there in the corner saying, ah, uh, we, we need to be included here. You're forgetting about the very important things we have to offer. Uh, um, uh, uh, but like basically, they kind of just wanted to get engaged with the conversation because this was about policy, This was, which led to also funding and things, and the arts were being excluded. Um, and, and this really kind of led to a rethink, actually, about sort of uh, what is the value of arts education? What is the value of humanities? What is the value of design um, and these things kind of needed to be brought into the conversation. And if we sort of uh, go to the next slide again, these qualities that kind of came up, balance, navigation, uh, empathy, critical thinking, cultural sensitivity, curiosity, reflection, risk-taking, immersion, play, imagination, speculation, these qualities. But still, why are these qualities useful? Actually, Sean, could we go back one? So again, like we might wonder why this is on fire here slightly. This is my homeland, Australia. Um, and as, as right now, there's floods again, like third time this year in Australia. It's an environmental disaster. Um, and we're facing an environmental emergency. And there's sort of, there was a, a report in a, a Frontier in cons Conservation that had the headline, uh, this was a scientific report that was looking at all of this sort of aspects of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And their conclusion was we face a ghastly future with a decline of human civilization. No, the steady decline. So very, it made all of the international headlines. I'm sure you're all very aware of the environmental emergency. But one of the key aspects in the report was that uh, often when we're trying to deal with these sustainable development goals, when we're trying to deal with these crises, we're not taking into account interdependencies. We're not taking into account how everything affects everything. So if we think back to STEM, when STEM came around in the late 90s, what was it like back then in the late 90s? What was our world like back then? You know, this was before planes were flying into towers. This was before the, 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 uh, the regular fires burning down my home. This was before the floods. This was before crises after crises of finance and global politics all sort of a dominoes, knock on, knock on, knock on. And being able to deal with these interdependencies, these complexities, this is why STEAM, this is why we sort of like nudge in art there. This is why these qualities on the next slide, we need to kind of implement and we need to sort of like sell. So uh, the, the theme for today is like making an impact. Like often I think we need to really describe how we can make an impact with STEAM education. And, and this is why these values are necessary. This is so we can navigate the sort of what's been described as the ambiguities, the, the sort of, uh, by Seamus this morning, the, the flood of, of art-like water that covers everything. This way to be able to navigate across all these different sort of uh, interdependencies, all these things that knock onto something. This requires like not, not art thinking, not design thinking, but a new way of thinking, a way of thinking that can kind of see across and not necessarily, we're also discussing uh, earlier today about expertise. It's not saying we need to get rid of disciplinary expertise. This is something we still very much need, but we also need to be able to have this ability to listen to the other disciplines, to each other, to sort of empathize, not only with each other, but also with, the, with our earth, with, with the world, with, with, with the, the things that we are having an effect on. And these are all qualities that come about through STEAM. And so I will go to the next slide. Um, uh, this is also, do you want to maybe click, discuss click, this? Keep clicking. Keep click. Sean, keep clicking. Oh. <laughs> keep clicking until it's, yeah, all the text, okay. 
So I think, and as I said, I, I, I think Chantal said something very similar, previous speakers also. I think we all have a, a similar foundation of why we're actually involved in STEAM. And it's, it's way beyond, um, you know, a very narrow uh, agenda. And there is mushrooming of STEAM now. And for those who stay till Thursday, we'll talk a bit more about it, about the, sorry, about the different um, aspects and motivations for STEAM. And there are different strands. And you can see we tend to come more from the art-informed interpretation of STEAM, which very much emphasizes that very strong societal responsibility in dealing with sustainability issues. And not just in a weak way, but in a strong way. But to say... We need a touchstone, and that's why we, we formulate the principles for higher education, just as a reference point, not as a, a Bible. And in fact, it would be really lovely to hear some responses um, and viewpoints of, of what seems to be more resonating and what may be less. But the STEAM is obviously a collective, and I said it, it, it is not the best term for some, but it, it, it can work, can be made to work. And I think as long as it's, it's interpreted in an inclusive way, and what is also interesting is I think it, the role of the artists are quite interesting. And we heard earlier today, they're quite often always related, very importantly in terms of the framing, actually putting things into question and why and in the first place and what should be the question. Very, very often I find politically and otherwise, we almost get forced to think a certain way and you're not even allowed or in consultations to raise anything than, than what is already on, on the agenda. That is a problem, and that's led us from the 1990s. I remember there was some energy in there before it flipped into quite a sort of consumerist, or let's get the economic machinery really going because it felt already very bad to having that, that, that blip already in the late 80s. That was terrible. Early 90s, you know, we need to keep going again. And we missed our chances to actually deal with all the forecasts that we already had about the ecological crisis. Um, because we knew that climate change crisis, we already had the reports there, the forecasts. What we see now in terms of all the environmental effects, they were already in there. So we knew about it, but we just were too lazy to act. We, we didn't want to get out of our comfort zone. And I think therefore now STEAM, in a way, is, is just another opportunity to wake up, shake up, and get our act together. Um, because it's taking us so flipping long, we're, we're really in crisis mode very soon. Saying that, crisis mood, I think you need something artistic and something lively and something more visual and something nurturing. So actually coming together in crisis, as we know also through past experience, can also be a really good motivator. But seeing the, the artists really as not just sort of a token or, or not just as a visualizer, but it, it, it's the catalyst. But I think everybody should, in a way, be part of that catalyst. And therefore, I think a lot of disciplines actually have a lot of creativity in there in themselves, you just need to liberate it again. Uh, and I've also heard people say, yes, okay, you always characterize different disciplinary trainings and people as showing certain characteristics, and that is true. But some also say, actually, within the disciplines, so within the arts, within engineering, within other disciplines, you also get those who are actually really up for it and those who are not and those who can already think out of the box and have sort of creative juices, and those who don't. And even within the arts world, not everybody is necessarily exactly practicing in this very critical way. So also we should, we should just rein back, really, and, and ref, uh, refrain from judgment and actually really just engage with the principles and think back to what we think is important and, and fundamental principles. If you move on. Um, and, and so, yeah, uh, just to go back then, we also developed uh, these methods that can sort of often sort of curricula that can be implemented in uh, university courses, like postgraduate and undergraduate degrees. Also sort of like uh, project methodologies, how to work across different transdisciplines. And these are sort of uh, being published, uh, most of them are online. Um, uh, on the steaminnovation.org. So again, these are resources to kind of like uh, lead to sort of bringing out these types of qualities that we kind of discussed. These, these qualities are important. Um, and, and so yeah, I'll just uh, skip to the next slide, Sean. Uh, these are some examples. Uh, so you can find them online again at steaminnovation.org. The next slide. 
Um, and yes, so then we'll go, pass over to Sean. So these sort of methods, and, and we've kind of been leading to create a whole toolkit. So basically a way how you can kind of bring this sort of toolkit and work out how to sort of implement it in your own courses, like disciplinary specific courses, um, and the different sort of strategies you can uh, do that and work out how to evaluate it. And Sean will now continue to discuss that. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew and Claudia. Um, that was a really great kind of uh, introduction uh, to you both. I, I can't speak much around uh, what life was like in the 80s or, 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 or kind of uh, the 90s, but I, I, I can say I, I, was, I was lucky enough to train, go to university and train as a scientist, but I was even more lucky to find myself <clears throat> in the artistic world um, working with Science Gallery and being able to kind of uh, interact with, with people like Claudia and Andrew and, and Laura and go into these conferences to see just how diverse and the large variety of kind of information and what we can do with that was super, super important. And I think that was a big, uh, a big goal for, for the project was how do we uh, initialize this in, in, in institutions that, that want to do STEAM or want to do transdisciplinary work, but may not have kind of the experience of it. Um, so what we did was we, we looked at all the, all the methodologies that were, that were developed by by each of the partners in the in the consortium, and there's some really wonderful and uh, kind of innovative methodologies that that, that were created and, and new approaches. And um, so we looked at the previous approaches that 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 uh, the institutions are already using, and then we looked at the new defined approaches that we learned from from collaborators. And uh, we looked at each of the learning outcomes and each of the skills and competencies that uh, the aim uh, that each of the approaches going to aim to produce. And um, what we came up with was that each of them seemed to uh, uh, fit into one of, uh, to one of these kind of main four categories. Um, and by four categories, I mean project identification, concept development, realization, and evaluation. Um, so what we did was we looked at what happened on a STEAM process. What is it when students are doing STEAM or uh, a group of people are coming together to do STEAM or do some transdisciplinary work? And we've came up with this idea of the STEAM process, which is, is somewhat similar to the double diamond method that some people might be familiar with. But in, in essence, um, everyone comes in with predefined knowledge. We all have experiences from, from past work that we, we can contribute to a project. The first part of the project is then trying to identify what it is that you want to tackle or what issues you, you, you want to, you, you want to, you want to uh, face. So like Andrew said, uh, it might be about climate change. It might be solving climate change. The next step is to not is to understand part of the part, uh, a small part of, of, of that issue, and um, such as climate change. It might be biodiversity. So you want to think of it more as a concept and understand the concept, uh, where you apply some system thinking to try to get to grips with, with, with what uh, who is involved, how do they interact with one another, and what what can you change in in your project. We then looked at um, realization, so turning something from a concept into a into a realized material or something actionable that, that that can be done. And then the last step of the whole process was to evaluate what you've done. Um, and through the evaluation, you can get tools for iteration uh, and and redo reuse the project again. Um, or you have knowledge outputs, um, uh, such as kind of conclusions or or. Uh, Issue, uh, knowledge that you can share with the, with the wider community. So this is kind of what we, we spoke about uh, uh, and kind of looked at, and we looked at each of these different parts and see what, what, what are the, the students learning from, from doing these, these projects. And we came up with these uh, STEAM components that some of you might be familiar with before, and um, they, might, they, might be, they might, have, you might have seen them before, um, and some of them are taken from the previous work that, that Claudia has, has previously done. So we found out that by doing these, these STEAM projects, uh, students are collaborating, they're communicating, they're exploring, they're applying critical thinking, they're applying evaluation, and they're working on citizenship and getting greater citizenship. And they're looking at sustainability, they're using metacognition, so they're reflecting constantly, they're trying to comprehend what, uh, all this material. Um, and also well-being, we found, was a, was a very important uh, aspect of, of each of these kind of STEAM, STEAM, uh, STEAM projects. And that is important to them. They realize their own self-worth and they're motivated to, 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 to continue the project. Um, they don't, they don't, none of these exist singularly. They all kind of interact with one another. So we found um, a lot of the kind of comp 
components that we that we developed and we developed sub components for each of these a lot of them began to overlap and then we could see how each of these kind of um steam skills or steam um uh steam components uh, were interacted with one another so for example uh we can subdivide these again into say co-working skills so for co-working we need we need collaboration communication for experimentation skills we need critical thinking um, and exploration and evaluation to understand uh, how do we change our experimental procedure and, and adapt more. For development, for each other, for community development, we looked at sustainability and citizenship skills. And then for personal development as well, um, where well-being and metacognition came, uh, interacted a lot. So what did we do with all this information? Um, we created a STEAM toolbox that uh, would allow uh, institutions, participants, uh, practitioners and, and students to go through this STEAM process and that's facilitated by a, a self-guided book um, at which at the end of which has an evaluate evaluation framework uh, attached onto the back of it that allows you to evaluate each of these singular steps based on those STEAM components that we that, that we developed and just for some examples I might take you through so, some examples to show you what um what actually is involved in this in this STEAM process so for example um, identification, if you want to identify an issue, we have one methodology called rapid ideation. Here, um, we have three separate domains uh, around ideas. So this is to come up with an idea out of, out of nothing. I'm sure you're all familiar with, with some versions of ideation before. Um, this domain, we have issues, users, and practice. So using sticky notes or uh, Miro, we, worked, we all worked on Miro. We have a set of, we ask people to create a set, a set of sticky notes related to issues, which are challenges in society. So it might be carbon emissions, biodiversity loss, or a housing crisis, which is something that we're, we're facing in Dublin, as, as well as in many other cities around the world. Uh, we ask them to generate a set of users, which are, are groups of people. So it might be a, a large group, a kind of vague group like students or parents, or it might be a very specific group, such as the blind community. This is all dependent on, on what project they're, they're interested in. And then a practice. So how do you go about um, uh, how do you go about actually working with these working with these people? Do you use media? Do you use initiatives or events? Um, and then that might, for example, that other might be architecture or sculpting, like a media practice, or it might be something like TikTok as well. Um, and from this, we randomly generate lots of lots of ideas and randomly pair each of the examples with each other. So students might end up getting TikTok as a practice. Uh, parents as a user and then um, biodiversity as as an issue and we get them to quickly come up with an idea or initiative based on based on those three things so it might be a tiktok uh, channel devoted to parents to help them do uh, help them increase biodiversity around around the house and um, uh, and uh, the next step would then be on concept development so we turn kind of our original idea into more onto a larger concept of like some system thinking. So we get to map our, our stakeholders in various in various settings. So uh, you might figure out who the key players are or who the crowd is. Um, you can use a stakeholder value map. So looking at particular aspects and the value that stakeholders can bring to those aspects. And it might be an empathy map. So what is actually important to important to the parents? Um, so I'm going to I'm going to skip over to the prototyping bit uh, to save time, but um, okay. But then we go into the evaluation side of things. So a, a student would go through one aspect of this or, or multiple aspects on that, depending on what they're on what what uh, issues they they want to tackle or what type of project they want to do. And then we can uh, apply evaluation methodologies to to each of these each of these components that we have. And for example, for some examples of some of the evaluation methodologies for each each component. We have three types of, of evaluation methodology. We have quantitative evaluation methodology, we have activity-based evaluation methodology, and we have reflective um, evaluation. So, for example, quantitative, we've all seen a quantitative evaluation before, I'm sure. Um, for example, these are some questions for collaboration. So it might be, I enjoy listening to the ideas of my group, I accepted ideas from my group, um, I found myself uh, using appropriate language, and this is more for the practitioners to use or the lecturers or, or uh, people, people like myself and yourself uh, when we're testing if our STEAM methods are, are, are good. Then there might be more activity-based um, uh, content. So for exploration skills, 
you might ask them to construct a timeline from the beginning of the project until now and have at least six milestones um, that are important for the project and provide images and descriptions so you can capture exactly what the process was like as the process is going on. And then there might be more reflective questions um, such as tell a story recounting one of the most memorable conversations you had over the project to try and capture what has been going on uh, over, over the course. Um, so that's kind of uh, my idea of this theme process. I'm going to hand it back to, to Claudia and Andrew now. Forward, actually, Sean. So it's not much left. So we just wanted to flag up some of the outputs so that you can see there's all links. Um, they are all available. If you go to the next slide, Sean. Sorry. Um, there's just, um, we're just logged. Um, so, so what is accessible. So the STEAM Innovation Curriculum Handbook is very easily downloadable from the web website. And we've also done a open access uh, publication that explains a lot, basically what we run through earlier. So that actually details how we went about it, also the context setting and, and the wider literature and all the, some of the tensions really in terms of implementing STEAM. It goes into a lot more detail about that. If you go to the next slide, Sean. Um, and then we also um, started obviously going to different conferences, which is also interesting how STEAM is beginning to fin feature as sessions in various conferences. And you learn a lot from it, because some are more arts-based, some are more science-based, but it's, it's very interesting. So we also tried to just to keep um, stimulating and thinking about things and exploring them from different angles. So linking, uh, for example, STEAM and design thinking, linking STEAM and transdisciplinary transdisciplinarity, and then also with looking really into the implementation aspects of it. So I think the, the project just kicked off a lot of ideas and, and alongside, basically, we tried to collaborate with each other to explore certain dimensions from it further. Um, I think that's been pretty much done then, isn't it? So the trans... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so also uh, there's the STEAM uh, toolbox that uh, Sean was talking about will be published in the next few months, at least by the end of the year. It's not currently online, but we'll have it up there. That's sort of going to be our sort of shining glory at the end of the project. But again, a lot of these things are online as well. And also I'd just like to sort of point out uh, what, what Sean was discussing with this evaluation methods. They often uh, sort of, we kind of, uh, our eyes glass over when we, when we think about uh, evaluation. But this is one of the most important things uh, uh, in trying to communicate why STEAM is important is being able to sort of measure the impact it has. And often we need that sort of information to kind of sort of emphasize and to change sort of uh, institutional policy, to change sort of like educational policy on a local, national, transnational level. But these sorts of things kind of need to be measured. And this is why we also spend a lot of time thinking about, and Sean did a great job as well, in developing this evaluation framework to kind of to measure those inputs. So yeah, I'd just also like to emphasize that and say thank you. <laughs> right. so can, we, can we have a round of applause, please, for our speakers? <laughs> just in the work that we're doing with industry and uh, across the academic network and with thinkers uh, and practitioners, one of the things uh, that I think, again, a number of the speakers have brought up about is how, how you go in between really challenging, sometimes toxic, sometimes societally um, unpleasant truths that we face now. And um, it, it really um, struck with me some of those um, qualitative outputs, listening to others in a group, accepting ideas, appropriate language, adapting language, and an equitable platform to communicate. These feel like really important progress points at a time in our society where those really difficult conversations need to be had. Um, and I think, for me, the STEAM Inc. Uh, project not only has brought some really great thinkers together, but I, hopefully it's created a very open, accessible platform from which you can now access those tools. And for me, uh, again, uh, just to reinforce my work in knowledge exchange, business needs tools and techniques to help to listen to conflicting ambitions and goals, to accept ideas across uh, areas of work, to manage appropriate language in a business place where there's often conflicting priorities, uh, different decisions that could be made. And I think every business, as well as every higher education institution, educational institution, 
needs an equitable platform to communicate across spaces. So for me, I think there's some brilliant outcomes there and just really grateful uh, for everyone sharing. I'm aware that I'm preventing you from getting coffee and I'm sure you're all really in need of it. I do just want to check, Laura, with the online um, community. Do we have any questions? Because uh, they won't be able to raise them over coffee. Okay, so we're just saying, uh, where do we get the links? Um, again, the, the website uh, has been mentioned on the presentation packs, but we'll make sure that all delegates have access to that. And uh, again, it's a, a phenomenal uh, way of working, I think, to open all of your work for everyone's benefit. Um, it feels a very enabling way of working. So please do go and get your tea and coffee. Uh, you, you've definitely earned it. You were very patient after dinner with, a, with quite a lot of content. I would like to get everybody back here at 3.30, but I am conscious I've, I've delayed you. So should we say 3.35 so you can get the full 15 minutes of caffeine infusion? Uh, and I welcome you back here to talk to Professor Peter Francis, our Deputy Vice-Chancellor, who's very much thinking along the lines of transformation. Enjoy your coffee. <laughs>